Welcome to Things You Should Know, Civil War Edition. Today we're going to talk about the Battle of Second Manassas, also known as the Second Battle of Bull Run that occurred in Prince William County, Virginia on August 28th to the 30th, 1862. One thing to note, this battle will be split up into two videos in order to make the video small enough for the channel's purpose. That being said, these videos are only a surface glance at this gigantic battle. Now welcome to part one of the Second Battle of Bull Run. After the fighting over Manassas Junction had finished and the link-up between Confederate Generals Longstreet and Jackson had occurred, Union General Pope was moving forward to engage with Stonewall Jackson in an attempt to push him back. On the morning of August 28th, the first columns of Union soldiers under the command of Union Generals John P. Hatch, John Gibbon, Abner Doubleday, and Marcena R. Patrick had arrived. Using the Warrington Turnpike, they found themselves near the Bronner Farm. Waiting not far from the farm was General Stonewall Jackson with his men. Jackson watched as the Union troops approached, and it is said that Jackson turned to his men and quietly said, Gentlemen, bring up your men. These words would signal the start of one of the largest battles up to this point in the war. The Confederate forces immediately began an artillery barrage on top of the Union troops, forcing Union soldiers to seek shelter off the road. However, units commanded by U.S. Major General Irvin McDowell, all of whom who were from Wisconsin and Indiana and would later be called the Iron Brigade, made themselves known. Instead of a wild run away from the artillery, they formed up into lines of battle and began to sweep across the field towards the Confederate fire. It was at the Bronner Farm that the Union and Confederate soldiers met in waves of fire and fury. The combat lasted a long two hours but had resulted in a stalemate as both sides stood less than 100 yards from each other. The fighting was ended by nightfall, and as the troops pulled back for the night, they left almost a third of their troops lying dead, wounded, and missing a heavy toll for the first day of battle. Union Commander Pope believed that the Union forces had the upper hand, however, and ordered the rest of his army to attack their Bronner farm the next morning. During the night, Pope moved up his artillery, and by morning, Confederate General Stonewall Jackson woke up to a massive Union artillery bombardment. In response, Jackson sent the divisions of Confederate Generals Ambrose Powell Hill, Alexander R. Lawton, and William E. Stark out along both flanks in preparation. However, the artillery of the Union did not signal a crush of Union troops attacking. Instead, General Pope spent the entire day utilizing a series of small attacks, poking at Jackson's defenses, but never committing fully. Some of these attacks included U.S. Brigadier General Milroy and Hooker's attack on the center of Jackson's line, with a follow-up later in the afternoon by U.S. Colonel James Nagel. All these attacks partially broke Jackson's battle line, but were never followed up with additional troops to take advantage and by the end of each attack, the Union troops had been pushed back. This changed for a short time when approximately 5 p.m. U.S. General Philip Kearney led his troops against Jackson's left flank. He pushed back Confederate General Hill's men out of Groventon Sudley Road and back to what was called the Stony Ridge. The only reason it was stopped was because of one of our favorite generals, Confederate Brigadier General Jubal A. Early's brigade. Even so, at this time the Confederates were close to losing the bridge. For reasons unknown, Union General Pope never sent reinforcements to help Kearney push the remaining Confederates away from the bridge. This resulted in a fourth retreat of the day for the Union forces. Thus signaled the end of the second day of battle. Join us next time for part two of the Second Battle Bull Run.